Please review the storm break. Opponent storm break. Please, please review the storm break. Please storm break. Please review the storm break. Please review the storm break. Please storm break. Please review the 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 storm break. You should really I review the storm break. Storm break. I don't want to see a storm, <laughs> storm break. break. Buy a storm, storm break. Opponent storm break. Opponent. Fine. I tried the storm breaker. All right. And it's awesome. Poner sent me their Stormbreaker BLG Valorant mouse to review, and I'm gonna test it in Minecraft. They also sent me their new Zenblade 65 as a surprise. Like seriously, I was not expecting or planning on reviewing this thing at all, but I promise you, you're gonna wanna hear and see this. It's crazy. So let's start with the unboxings. I'm first gonna do a quick rundown of the specs of the Stormbreaker and the Zenblade, because if you're trying to figure out if this mouse and keyboard are right for you, they matter a ton. I first wanna start off with the price. The Stormbreaker costs 169 USD, which is quite pricey and the Zenblade costs 199 Again, that is also quite pricey. But it is important to keep in mind though that with the price of these items, you get verifiably some of the best build quality I've seen in a mouse and keyboard, period. I'm talking magnesium build material for the Stormbreaker, 50 gram weight, Omron optical switches, which are featured on my model by the way, and mechanical Omrons are on the regular Stormbreaker. A super accurate PAW 3395 sensor, which I would actually say feels just as, if not slightly more snappy and accurate than even my super light too, and that's a hard standard to beat. You guys might have noticed that the dongle for the mouse is this little pyramid receiver, which you can place near your mouse for the best signal. And I actually think that this is a really cool and good idea because it adds a nice little touch to the mouse that separates it from others, in my opinion at least. The battery life has been average for me so far as I found that it's about 60 hours at 1000 hertz, which is as advertised, and with 2K polling enabled, it lasts a bit less. Here's a sound test of the Stormbreaker. Now, don't worry, I'm gonna talk a lot more about the mouse when I test it in game and share my thoughts on it for Minecraft, but I first wanted to take a second to talk about the Zenblade. Earlier, I mentioned that I was not expecting this keyboard because when I emailed Ponage, I had actually let them know that, hey, you know, I recently just did a keyboard review and I was only looking to do a mouse review. But when I saw the package arrive at my door, I immediately recognized that the box was way too big to just have a mouse and surely enough, the Zenblade 65 was inside. So I went and I took a look at it without really knowing anything about it and let me tell you. I was absolutely blown away. This has to be one of the best feeling keyboards I have ever used. Just listen to this. So yeah, you heard how amazing that sounds, right? Well, not only does it sound amazing, but it's built with top-notch attention to detail with premium aluminum, has the perfect amount of lube on the switches and stabs, which is so often not done well on gaming keyboards. Like this one is, it's literally just right in that perfect sweet spot. It has two foam layers for sound dampening, is hot swappable, and the best part is that it also uses Hall Effect magnetic switches, which means that this board has rapid trigger and adjustable actuation points, just like the Wooting does. Like, I mean this so sincerely, I was very, very pleasantly surprised and quite honestly taken back by the quality of this keyboard. I was literally jaw dropped when I tried typing on it for the first time. But now I think that it's time that we test this all in Minecraft. So at the time of recording this footage, I actually have been using both the Stormbreaker and the Zenblade 65 for three days. I think it only makes sense to talk first about the keyboard and its use in Minecraft since keyboards are just generally not as important as the mouse in game, but it still makes a huge difference. Some of you guys might have watched my review of the Wooting 60HE+, which is basically the OG Hall Effect keyboard that set the standard for magnetic switches, and the Zenblade seems to be a much more premium take on that. I can confidently say that it comes out of the box with better build quality, better sound, and has essentially all of the bells and whistles that the Wooting one does for roughly the same price. I can honestly say going forward that as far as gaming keyboards go, 
I would not really recommend anything other than a Hall Effect keyboard. Like for gaming, it's really the new minimum in my opinion. Rapid Trigger makes W tapping so much easier and it can be customized to your personal preference. I'm not trying to overstate anything here. Like obviously, if you can't afford to spend $200 on a keyboard, that's completely reasonable. But I just wanted to let you know that for a product that I legit wasn't even expecting on getting or planning on reviewing, it absolutely performed and I have no complaints about it physically, with the only exception being the software, which is a web app, but other than that, it's fantastic. As for the Stormbreaker, now it is the best ergonomic mouse I've ever used. Again, not to compare it to another mouse, but it's to me the equivalent of the Superlight 2, but as an ergo mouse. And not to mention, it looks way, way cooler. Starting with what everyone is here for, we got to address the CPS because this actually is something that I found to be an issue, but not with my mouse. It's actually more of an issue with my hands. You see, the Stormbreaker can click up to well over 20 CPS, even with the model I have, which uses optical switches. But because of the size, I'm not able to perfectly fit my fingers on the mouse to get perfect double clicks. If the mouse was just a bit bigger, I'd probably be able to double click on it perfectly. Now, another thing about it is that it doesn't have an adjustable debounce time and cannot drag click, or at least the model I have can. So if you're a Minecraft player that needs the highest CPS butterfly click possible, maybe opt for a regular Stormbreaker with mechanical switches, or consider looking at a different mouse if your hands are on the larger side, or in my case, the wider side. I was actually expecting this mouse to be about the same size as a Model O, but it's surprisingly small, roughly at the same size as a Model O- minus or D-. minus. Other than for butterfly clicking though, the size really isn't a big deal. Like if I was a 1.21 main, the size wouldn't affect the mouse for me at all because it's still built really, really well and is just a great shape. Like on my unit, right? Despite all the holes this thing has in the design, I have not experienced any flexing, wobbling, creaking, or other problems that you might think would come with such a lightweight mouse. And that's really what gets me with this mouse is the weight. Now, a lot of people have stated that for Minecraft, low weight mice aren't the best. But honestly, after getting used to such a lightweight mouse and also being a huge fan of the Superlight 2, I can't ever picture myself going back to heavy mice or at least using them on a regular basis. I also got the glass skates on my Stormbreaker and it just glides super well. It's probably the most glidey mouse I have, to be honest. The sensor on this mouse is also fantastic and I could recommend it without question to anyone that wants a fantastic ergo experience. The last thing I noticed that was phenomenal about this mouse is the adjustable sensor. As at first, the shape and the sensor placement were just a little bit too far forward because as I said previously, I like to palm grip my mouse. So I took the screwdriver and moved the sensor back just a little bit and the difference was surprisingly noticeable. I've seen some people online call this feature a gimmick, but I can confidently say that if you palm or fingertip grip your mouse, adjusting the sensor could actually make a noticeable impact on in-game performance. Ultimately, this mouse was absolutely phenomenal and it's tied in first place with the Superlight 2 as being my favorite. It's just its ergo counterpart. If you want to pick up this mouse, keyboard, or anything else from Ponage, I'll have an affiliate link in the description which supports me and also a discount code TRAINERDARIO which, when applied to your basket, gives you 5% off of your total purchase site-wide. That's all for today's video. Make sure to check out my Lunar Cloaks, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Peace!